Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial on morphing. This is going to be the final part of this morphing tutorial. Uh, last time we went over uh, morphing this face into, an, uh, into another face. Uh, we used a picture of an old man. It looks like this. Pretty cool. He goes from a, a young looking man to sort of this Smeagol looking character. Um, and what we are going to do now is seeing, we're going to see if we can morph this face uh, into one final image, which is a skull. This is going to be sort of a Halloween animation. It's going to morph from this face to the old man face and then to a skull. Okay, first thing we need to do is select our tracing image or import the image that we're going to use. I'm going to go to view. I'm going to say select tracing image and I pick this skull here. Ooh, spooky. And of course, we're going to use the young face because when the, the face morphs into the old person, um, then you get a lot of sagging in, in the lower fleshy parts of the chin. And so it, it won't be very accurate. The, the skull would be somewhere above that sagging. So that's what we're going to do. As long as the chin is somewhere down by the base of the skull, I think that's pretty good right there. Actually, we're going to have to... You can see the eyes are pretty misaligned here, so and the mouth is too. So we're going to need to go up a bit, because otherwise it will not look as good. We can actually align the teeth. You can see where the teeth are there. Front teeth end right about there. Um, so we'll make the make it a little bit bigger. That's pretty close. Doesn't need to be perfect, but close. All right, and if you didn't make the last tutorial, uh, again, we're going to just make an action. It's a morph action, and we're going to modify all the points of our artwork so that way it either disappears or it moves into the position of this skull. And so basically what you do is you uh, just go to the layer you want to start with, the face usually. Yep, I'm going to go ahead and select New Action and we're going to call it skull morph Oops, something got distorted there but anyway it needs to go in the position of this skull on frame one here when you make a new action it opens up this new timeline and frame one is where your new position needs to be then when you go back to the main line the the main timeline and you move on, on your timeline and reference that action it will uh, it will instantly, over one frame, change from the old image to the new image, and then you can stretch out that uh, action over many frames so that way it morphs over time. Okay, so we've got the image about the size of this head. So I'm going to go ahead and open my uh, character, go to the uh, face, and now we can just take this outline and put the points where we want them. Um, of course, we have to do it within the action. So. There it is. So now we can start moving things where they need to go. Let's do that. Okay, guys. So I had a lot of problems uh, finishing up this animation or finishing up rigging this face. Um, if, if you've been with me so far on this video, we've seen um, that this character has a lot of... of smart bone actions a lot of actions and they're not just a lot of them it's it, they're pretty complex I mean these morphs are not anything shabby so it goes from you know this face to the old man and then I finally finished up to the skull that I wanted to go to um, so it's really cool it just was very taxing on the application uh, it got taxing to the point where the application was actually crashing on me um, so I think I pushed Moho to its limit. I still love Moho. I think it's an excellent tool. And, um, but uh, anyways, just a couple of notes and, and bits of advice I can get, give you guys is just um, be, very, uh, uh, be very efficient with how you create your smart bone actions. Um, you want to have things in a very neutral position when you're making each smart bone action. So for instance, you don't want the eyebrows to be already in a very mad position when you do it because all these smart bone actions uh, are competing for the position of the points of your animation. 
And so it's important to have everything in a neutral, a neutral position for all of your smartphone actions. Anyways, uh, so that's one bit of advice um, that I would give. Uh, but good luck working on your smartphone actions. Um, if you like this video, give it a like, a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know what you liked about it or what you'd like to see in the future. And I should also note that this animation is not my final animation for this project. This is a Halloween project that I'm going to do, but I'm going to be adding more to this animation. But this is just sort of the basic thing that I put together uh, using this morph. Oh, and one more point, uh, the morphs. Um, you can do morphs on every layer, but it ended up being less taxing on the program to just use a smart bone action for the morph. So that's what I did. I used a smart bone action, as you can see. It just moves all my morphs using one tool, and that's just so much more efficient. Um, so that's something I would recommend. I had originally done morphs on each layer, um, and it just ended up being less efficient and more taxing on the application. So good luck with everything. Here's the animation that I put together with this morph. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!